the continuation of the topic uh, alcohols and halogen alkane the yesterday we started topic alcohols first we discuss how we can name these alcohol depending on the position of OH we can name these alcohols the bond angle depends on how many bond pairs and how many lone pairs are there so on the basis of the valence shell electron pair repulsion theory we can predict the bond angle as well as the geometry of the molecule then alcohol can be classified as primary secondary or tertiary primary means the carbon which is attached with OH is having a one carbon chain primary if two carbon chains are there then secondary and three carbon chains then it will be tertiary when we burn these alcohol alcohol can be used as a fuel so combustion of alcohol produce carbon dioxide and water as a result heat is also produced and when we react with sodium metal it produces effervescence bubbles the mixture get hot and the solid the sodium dissolve as well as the white solid is also produced then substitution reaction we can convert alcohol into halogen alkane by adding pcl5 or pcl3 or pi5 or pi3 or the second way we can also use sulfuric acid and sodium halide but that is not valid for substitution of bromine and iodine because they are good reducing agent they will reduce the sulfur to lower oxidation numbers an oxidation of a primary alcohol partial oxidation gives aldehyde and complete oxidation of primary alcohol produce carboxylic acid whereas secondary alcohol they are oxidized to ketone and tertiary cannot be oxidized if you want to distinguish if you want to uh, distinguish between aldehyde and ketone so we can use a felling or banetic solution because it contain a copper two ion so originally it is blue in color but as a result aldehyde is oxidized and copper two ion is reduced to copper one and it will react with oxygen to form copper one oxide which will be a red precipitate and these are the techniques which we can use to prepare these alcohol uh, prepare aldehyde and carboxylic acid from alcohols now today's topic is about halogen alkane the term halogen alkane means when halogen such as chlorine fluorine chlorine bromine or iodine is attached to a carbon chain we call them as halogen alkane and if fluorine is attached we use the term fluoro chlorine is attached we'll use the term chloro bromine is attached we'll use the term bromo and iodine is attached we'll use the term iodo so first we select the longest carbon chain and numbering should start from the nearest branch or the functional group so when we count from left hand side one two and three so first position we have a branch if we count from right hand side one two and three so third position there will be a branch we always follow a numbering where the branch or the functional group is closer so that's why we'll follow from left to right so first position we have a branch of bromine so that's why we say one bromo and there are three carbon atoms that's why it is prop and between the carbon atoms there is a single bond so it is a and so it is one bromo propane same way if we have a branch as well as the halogen attached so first we select the longest carbon chain then the numbering should start from nearest branch or functional group so one, two, three, four. Second position we have methyl group and chlorine group. And when we name the branches, we always use alphabetical order. Like in terms of Albert, it's not about the position; it's about the alphabetical order. So second position we have chlorine. So we don't bother about which position it is, but because chlorine is a branch, that's why we use the term chloro. So two chloro. And second position we have a methyl group. So two methyl. There are four carbon atoms, so but and single bond between them, in. Same way, like alcohols, halogen alkane can be classified as primary, secondary, or tertiary. So what is a primary halogen alkane? The primary halogen alkane, the carbon which is bonded with directly with the halogen and alkane is surrounded by only one carbon chain or one alkyl group. We call that as primary. 
same way the carbon which is attached with halogen alkane is surrounded by two carbon chains or two alkyl groups we call that as secondary and tertiary means the carbon which is attached with halogen alkane is surrounded by three carbon chains we call that as tertiary so we can have primary secondary or tertiary halogen alkanes so one carbon at attached to the carbon atom adjoining the halogen two carbon atoms or two basically it's not about two carbon atom it's about two carbon chains like if you not necessary that total number of the carbon should be two it can be any number in the but the total two groups are attached to alkyl groups secondary three alkyl groups are there so it will be tertiary then the reactions which type of reaction these halogen alkane undergo they undergo nucleophilic substitution reaction and there is a general mechanism for this reaction to occur so it is nucleophilic substitution so what happen in nucleophilic substitution reaction basically when we have halogen alkane so there is a bond between carbon and halogen and around it there are carbon chains but this is a main where the part of a molecule where the reaction occur because halogens are more electronegative than carbon so there will be partial negative and there will be partial positive so why we call nucleophilic why we call because what happen a nucleophile attracted towards the electron deficient side or attracted towards the positive center or they are like nucleus loving the term nucleophilic or nucleophile means nucleus loving group means they are attracted towards the nucleus and nucleus is always positive because there is a proton present inside the nucleus so nucleus is always positive that's why we call them as nucleophiles as these molecules or group of molecules attracted towards the electron deficient side or the positive center so what happen in this reaction the nucleophile will form a bond with the carbon and the halogen alkane will be the leaving group so one side the nucleophile is added with a or form a bond with a carbon and the halogen alkane leave the carbon so that's why we call nucleophilic substitution why substitution because one atom or group of atoms are displaced by other group so nucleophile why nucleophilic because the molecules which are attracted towards the carbon the electro the partial positive side they are known as a nucleophile and why substitution because one atom leave another one another atom enter and this nucleophilic substitution reaction is divided into two categories one is known as sn2 reaction another one is sn1 reaction so what about this one and two like nucleophilic substitution reaction can be sn1 it can be sn2 what about sn2 and sn1 sn2 means this number 2 means that the reaction depends on two molecules whereas this one is representing that the reaction only depends on one molecule normally when we have primary halogen alkane and secondary halogen alkane they undergoes sn2 reaction but if we have tertiary halogen alkane or some of the secondary halogen alkane they can undergo sn1 reaction i will discuss the difference between the two 
but you should uh, first understand the fact that if we have a primary halogen alkane, there is always SN2 reaction. If we have secondary halogen alkane, there is always SN1 reaction. And commonly, SN1 reaction is common in primary and secondary, whereas SN2 is there in tertiary and secondary. So some secondary can have SN1, some secondary can have SN2 reaction. But what is the difference between SN1 and SN2? So example, if you have a nucleophilic substitution reaction, which is SN2. This 2 is actually a power, the exponent is there, it's not a, it's a superscript, it's not the number written beside it, it's normally a superscript, SN2. Basically, SN2 reaction occur in primary halogen alkane. So, example, if we have a primary halogen alkane, So primary halogen alkane means like a carbon attached to the halogen. It, it can be any halogen like X. X means it can be fluorine, chlorine, bromine or iodine. So carbon which is joined with the halogen alkane is surrounded by only one carbon chain. So there's only one carbon chain is there and rest hydrogen atoms are there. This is primary halogen alkane. Now what happened, the term SNS stands for substitution, and N stands for nucleophilic. So S is for substitution and N is for nucleophilic. So when there is an attack on the positive center and that one of the atom displaces by the other atom, we call that as a substitution. And when the reaction starts by attacking on the positive center, we call that as a nucleophilic reaction. So what happened in primary halogen alkane? This carbon, because carbon is more electronegative, so it will be partial positive, and this halogen alkane carbon is less electronegative because halogen alkane is more electronegative so partial negative on halogen alkane and partial positive on carbon now what happened if we have a nucleophile nucleophile means any any atom or group of atom which are attracted towards the positive center there are many examples of nucleophile like example oh group is a nucleophile nitrile group is a nucleophile so these are some examples of the nucleophile which are attracted towards the electron deficient site or the positive center. So what happened? Example, we have a nucleophile I am representing by NU. NU means nucleophile. It can be any atom or group of atoms. So as a result, what happened? This nucleophile, because the nucleophile means they are attracted towards the electron deficient site or the positive center. So this nucleophile will attack on the carbon. When this nucleophile will attack on the carbon and nucleophile normally they have extra electron or negative charge on them. That's why they're attracted towards the positive center. So when this nucleophile attack on the carbon, the partial positive carbon, as a result, what will happen? So this CH3, H, H, and then two things will happen. There is a bond breaking. The halogen alkane will try to break the bond and the nucleophile will try to form a bond. So two things will happen at the same time. There's a bond breaking and so this bond will start to break and this bond will start to form 
So bond breaking and bond forming will take place at the same time and the charge on this intermediate will be negative. Why the charge is negative on this intermediate? Because the whole molecule, halogen alkane molecule is neutral and nucleophile is negative. So when this negative combined with a neutral, the a whole molecule will get a negative charge. And when the, the bond, one side the bond will break and the other side the bond will form, as a result what happens? that the carbon will form a bond with the nucleophile. So this nucleophile will have a bond with the carbon. And that halogen alkane, because it takes both of the electrons, so there will be a negative charge on halogen alkane. So we called as a nucleophilic substitution reaction. Why we call nucleophilic substitution reaction? Why nucleophile? Because the molecule is attracted towards the positive center or nucleus loving. That's why we call that molecule as nucleophile. And why substitution? Because one atom enter, another atom leaves. And we call this is which category of a nucleophilic substitution? It is known as SN2. So S stands for substitution, N stands for nucleophile, and two means that the reaction started with two molecules. One is the halogen alkane, another one is a nucleophile. Is it clear this SN2 reaction? Any doubt till this point? So this is nucleophilic substitution reaction SN2. But what happened? The nucleophilic substitution reaction which is SN1 and this happened like in nucleophilic substitution reaction SN2 this happened for primary halogen alkane. But in SN2, uh, SN1, it happened for tertiary halogen alkane. Tertiary halogen alkane means the carbon which is attached, the carbon which is attached with the halogen alkane is surrounded by three carbon chains. So carbon will be partial positive and halogen alkane is partial negative. If we have a nucleophile around it, means which is attracted towards the positive center, so this nucleophile is not able to attack on the carbon. But why this nucleophile is not able to attack on the carbon? Because before that, in a primary halogen alkane, the carbon was surrounded by small molecules like hydrogen, which are very small. But now what happened? The carbon is surrounded by large molecules. So this is a tertiary halogen alkane. So because the carbon is surrounded by the large molecule around like la large carbon chain. So this nucleophile is not able to attack on the carbon. It's not able to find a space to attack on the carbon and what we call this we call that as a steric hindrance. A steric hindrance refers to that the term which we use that the nucleophile does not find a space to attack on the carbon due to large molecule. So we call that as a steric hindrance. So in SN1 reaction, the nucleophile is not able to attack, so this does not make any difference. So how the reaction occur if the nucleophile is not able to attack? So basically what happened first, the halogen alkane, because that is more reactive. So this halogen alkane will take both of the electron because like greater electronegativity, so it will take both of the electron as a result 
when this halogen alkane will take both of the electron there will be a negative charge this halogen alkane molecule is there in which halogen basically halogen is more electronegative so it will take both of the electron so when this halogen takes both of the electron there will be a negative charge on the halogen and there will be a positive charge on the carbon and now because you can see that halogen breaks the bond with the carbon so now the nucleophile can attack it can attack from left hand side or from right hand side now because space is available so now the nucleophile will attack on the carbon cation and as a result when this nucleophile will attack on the carbon cation it will form a bond with the carbon so there will be a, again this is a substitution because halogen leaves the carbon and nucleophile added to the carbon but we call that as sn1 reaction why sn1 substitute nucleophilic substitution why one is there as you can see the reaction started with one molecule only we don't need a nucleophile to start up this reaction whereas in this case the reaction need a nucleophile as well as a halogen alkene so that's the difference between sn1 and sn2 reaction in SN1, the bond breaking and bond forming will take SN2, the bond breaking and bond forming will take place at the same time. But in SN1, first the bond will break and then the bond will form. And here the intermediate means in between stage is known as the intermediate. So in intermediate, the carbon cation is the overall molecule is negative. But in this case, SN1, the molecule which is produced, that is positive is it clear the difference between sn1 and sn2 reactions so this is a journal mechanism but now as we'll discuss the reactions related to halogen alkane we will discuss specifically what happened in different types of reactions so The reactions of halogen alkane, halogen alkane undergo a substitution reaction. There are two ways the reaction can occur. Either substitution is there or elimination is there. But we discuss already substitution. So we'll focus first on substitution. And what kind of substitution are there? The reactions are known as a nucleophilic substitution reaction. Why nucleophilic? Because uh, the reaction started by attacking on the partial positive ion and <clears throat> what are nucleophi nucleophiles nucleophiles are electron pair don donators because they, they can donate electron pair so they should have a lone pair or there will have be a charge on them either with a lone pair or the charge negative charge on them they can donate that electron So example, these are some nucleophiles like we have OH, OH is a nucleophile, why OH is a nucleophile? Because it contain a lone pair, a pair of electron is there or even a negative charge so it can attack on positive center. Even ammonia, ammonia is NH3. But because there is a lone pair, so this lone pair, because these are electrons, so they can be attracted towards the partial positive carbon. That's why we call them as a nucleophile. Same way the nitrile group, the CN group, also having a negative charge. So negative charge is attracted towards the positive. So they can also attack on the carbon positive. So that's why they all are referred to nucleophiles. So first one, the nucleophilic substitution, later we'll discuss the hydrolysis, but first one, nucleophilic substitution reaction. What are the reagents here? We are using potassium or sodium hydroxide, that is a reagent. And what are the conditions? We are using aqua solution and we heat them. You have to learn these conditions because exam point of view, you should be able to label. 
what conditions are needed for nucleophilic substitution reaction so heat under the reflux and substitution reaction will occur and role of the reagent the nucleophile oh is there how the reaction occur how the reaction proceed So as you can see here, and it de also depends on what kind of halogen alkane we have. So generally, if I write, if we have halogen alkane, we can represent by Rx and we react with alcohol, uh, sorry, potassium hydroxide like KOH or sodium hydroxide aqueous. So as a result, what happened, it will be ROH means alcohol will be there and potassium halide or sodium halide, the salt will be there. This is overall equation, but exam point of view, you should be able to write the mechanism. But it is easy to write the mechanism because this is a nucleophilic substitution reaction. If SN2 mechanism will be there, if the, in the question they give you the primary halogen alkane. And SN1 reaction will be there. If in the question they give you tertiary halogen alkane. So it depends on the question. I will uh, give example with both, like with a primary halogen alkane as well as tertiary halogen. Alkane. Secondary, because some of the secondary can undergo SN2 and some of the secondary can undergo SN1. So it's not fixed for secondary. That's why if the secondary halogen alkane is given in the question, they will give you information that it undergo SN2 reaction or SN1 reaction. So example, we have a halogen alkane. So we have CH2, Cl is there, CH2 and CH3. So this is the halogen alkane. First, we have to classify this halogen alkane. How to classify the halogen alkane? Check the carbon which is bonded with halogen. For example, this carbon which is bonded with halogen, it's surrounded by only one carbon chain. So if it, two hydrogen and one carbon chain. So what does it mean? It means it is a primary halogen alkane and if it's a primary halogen alkane then it should be SN2 reaction. So if you want to write the mechanism or show the mechanism it's better like look the original molecule was given as a structural formula but you have to show in a proper manner so you can identify what happened. So first when I draw this will be carbon, carbon maximum can form four bonds. So one is into the plane, one is out of the plane and two of them are in the same plane. So this is a halogen alkane. The carbon which is attached with halogen alkane, basically this is a carbon. So I will uh, just use another color so you can recognize. So this is a carbon. Around this carbon, there are two hydrogen atoms. The so two hydrogen atoms are there. Anywhere we can make, it does not make difference. Then chlorine is attached. Better on the right hand side, you make the chlorine and then the carbon chain is there CH2 and CH3. So this CH2, CH3, I can write in short, I can write C2H5. So this C2H5 and then put the sign, the partial positive on carbon and partial negative on chlorine. It can be any halogen alkane, but for example, we took chlorine, that's why we are writing specifically chlorine. Otherwise, it can be bromine, it can be iodine. It won't make difference. The rate of the reaction will be different. That we'll discuss later. 
But right now we are discussing how the reaction can proceed. Now the attacking nucleophile because we are adding potassium hydroxide, aqueous potassium hydroxide. So what are the ions present in KOH? It contain potassium ion and it contain hydroxide ion. So basically potassium hydroxide provide hydroxide ion and this hydroxide ion is a nucleophile because that is attacking on the OH or HO group which is having a lone pair and there is a negative charge. So that will attack on the partial positive carbon. So as a result, when you did attack on the partial positive carbon, there will be a bond breaking and bond forming at the same time. So with the carbon, so this is the carbon. There is no difference with the molecules such as hydrogen. And there is no difference with the molecule attached like C2H5 also no difference. This is hydrogen, hydrogen and there is a Cl. But now what happened? that there will be a bond breaking and bond forming at the same time. So how we represent the bond breaking and bond forming? So we represent by a dotted line. Like one side the bond is breaking, another side is the bond is forming. So OH is forming a bond and chlorine is breaking the bond or taking both of the electron and the intermediate which is formed here The intermediate which is formed here, it should have what charge because OH, oh, this molecule was neutral and OH is negative. So intermediate will be negative. And at the last what happened? Chlorine will break the bond. So we are left with OH or HO we can also say. Then the carbon is there, C2H5. Then H is there, H. So carbon is stable and what happened to this chlorine? So this will be a Cl ion because it took chloride ion because it took both of the electrons which were involved in the bonding with carbon. And this chloride ion mixed with potassium ion. So as a result, what it produced? Because this OH is coming from potassium hydroxide. So there's a potassium ion available. So as, as a result or at the last what happened, the potassium ion combined with the chloride ion and as a result, it produced potassium chloride. Even you can complete the mechanism till this point, this is acceptable or you can write potassium chloride that is also the right way. So this is an intermediate in which the bond breaking and bond forming is taking place at the same time. Is it clear the mechanism and this is SN2 reaction. Why 2? Because the molecule, the reaction rate depends on 2 molecules. Is it clear till this point? And you might have SN1 reaction like potassium hydroxide can also react with the KOH, can react with the tertiary halogen alkane. In that case, it will be SN1. So if you have tertiary halogen alkane, like example, carbon, surrounded by three alkyl groups. So this is CH3, this is CH3, C2H5 and Cl. So now the attacking nucleophile does not find a space to attack on the carbon because due to the steric hindrance or the uh, large molecules attached, So first what will happen the bond will break like chlorine will take both of the electrons which are involved in the bonding and it will form an intermediate with a carbon cation surrounded by more alkyl groups. This is C2H5 example and this is 
CH3 and there's a chloride ion. Then the second stage, what happened the, in the second stage intermediate is formed. So KOH, which contain potassium ion and hydroxide ion. So that hydroxide ion is a nucleophile. Now this hydroxide ion, it, it find a space to attack. So it will, it can attack from any side now because the chlorine has left. So as a result, It will be C2H5, CH3, CH3, and there will be OH or a HO group, you can also say better because oxygen is bonded with in carbon instead of hydrogen. And then this, again, this chloride, which is produced mixed with potassium. So as a result, it can produce potassium chloride, or you can also say the chloride ion. So here, what happened first, the bond break, intermediate carbon cation is formed and then the nucleophile can attack that's why we call sn1 that the molecule the reaction started with one molecule but sn2 means the reaction started with two molecules one is oh another one is the primary halogen alkane is it clear the two mechanisms the difference between the two sn1 and sn2 reactions So as you can see here, this is a primary halogen alkane. So this is a primary halogen alkane, partial positive and negative. So the attacking nucleophile attack on the, the direction of arrow is also important. So you will draw from a lone pair to the partial positive carbon and then dotted line to show a bond breaking and bond forming. And then the bromide, if, if it was bromide, then bromine will leave. If it was uh, chloride, then chloride ion will leave. If iodide, then iodide ion will leave. So the OH is a strong nucleophile and it has full negative charge so that uh, more strongly attracted towards a carbon cation. And the aqueous condition needed important. If alcoholic conditions are used, we will find that the reaction is not substitution. It will turn out to be elimination so it is important that we carry out the reaction in aqueous substance rather than alcoholic and this is what happened sn1 which happened in a tertiary halogen alkane you can see how it is tertiary the carbon is surrounded by three alkyl groups so first the halogen alkane will break the bond the carbon cation is formed and then the nucleophile can attack on the carbon and the bond will form between them So first the bond breaking will occur in tertiary and then the bond forming. Whereas primary bond breaking and bond forming will take place at the same time. Is it clear? The concept of nucleophilic substitution reaction, SN1 and SN2. Any question or doubt till this point? 